But first up, cervical cancer. Australia is on track to become the first country in the world to eliminate cervical cancer, a disease that kills a quarter of a million women around the world every year. The World Health Organisation has dubbed it one of the gravest threats to women's lives. And last year, it called for global efforts to scale up vaccination and screening programs. Now, an Australian team is working with local health clinics in Malaysia to deliver cervical screening. And they're taking an innovative approach, using self-collected HPV or human papillomavirus tests to overcome cultural barriers. Associate Professor Marion Saville is Executive Director of the VCS Foundation, a leading non-profit helping to deliver the project, and I spoke with her earlier. Marion, welcome to The Health Report. Thanks for having me. Let's start with the situation here at home. Australia is on track to eliminate cervical cancer. Presumably that's because of our national immunisation program, but also because of the changes to the national screening program in 2017. That's when we went from uh, pap smears to HPV tests. Yeah, that's right. So it's a combination of very high and early HPV vaccination compared to other countries around the world, together with our change from cytology-based screening to HPV-based screening, which is predicted to give us about 30% better incidence and mortality than we currently have. So when you bring that together with vaccination, we should have cervix cancer down to a rate that's considered eliminated as a public health problem in 2035. Okay, so it's a pretty optimistic picture really for us, Uh, but in many parts of the world that's not the case. There were nearly 600,000 new cases of cervical cancer last year. Where do we need to scale up vaccine coverage and screening programs? So this is really an equity problem. We've controlled cervix cancer with screening historically and we've added to that with vaccination. And I think it's so uncommon in Australia, this cancer now, that most people don't know anyone who's had it. But you don't need to go far from Australia to see where that is not the case, where those preventative services have not been available. So this is really a problem, particularly in low and middle income countries. In our region, Papua New Guinea, many of the uh, countries of the Pacific Islands and up into Asia are struggling to provide the services to prevent this cancer. Treatment remains a problem, so radiotherapy is critical and palliative care is critical. Many of these women are dying terrible deaths without adequate pain control and with quite a lot of social isolation and in some settings it's quite a shameful cancer. And is it about lack of resources, cost of vaccine? What's the kind of major barriers to Yeah, at its heart, it's a resourcing problem. There are also systems problems and expertise problems. And I think one of the obligations we have in Australia, having really had access to good political support and good funding, is to offer our expertise to our neighbours. Are there countries around the world where, because of cultural barriers, Mm. access to screening remains an issue? We see that to a certain extent in Australia. We know from our Victorian work that 80% of women who get cervix cancer in Australia either haven't been screened or are very overdue with their screening. And that is culturally driven, but it's not one culture. Having done quite a few studies on this, I think women who are traumatised in any way, whether they're economically deprived, whether they've had difficult family circumstances, and some women there are religious reasons, it's just too much vulnerability to lie on your back and get the speculum put in. That's really challenging in a number of countries and also populations here in Australia. And one of the ways that VCS is trying to deliver these kind of prevention services where they're really needed is in a program in Malaysia that you're involved in. Can you tell me a little bit about what the program is? It's at a pilot stage at the moment. So we've just completed a pilot and we are trying to establish more of a program and we're trying to move to scale. Project Rose, as it was called, is very much a partnership and it has been an absolute pleasure to work with Prof Wu Yinling from the University of Malaya. She's a gynae oncologist. 
She's Malaysian, but she trained in Cambridge. And she came home and found unexpectedly high rates of cancer that she was treating. So we've partnered with her and her team over there to understand their setting and we've brought our technical expertise. But together we visited the public clinics where this is needed and we really designed a solution after talking to nurses and doctors in those clinics and trying things out. And a big part of that project is a self-collection process, right? So it's HPV self-tests. So there's three components to the way this is being delivered. First of all, we're primary screening with an HPV test that is self-collected by the woman. We've also used our population health and our digital health expertise to write a small registry program for them. What we found in Malaysia is working through the post was never going to work. So we ended up with a system where the nurses could use their own mobile phones and register women, including the woman's telephone number. That's meant that after the woman returns her sample, she's getting her result as a text message to her phone within a couple of days. If the test is positive, the message invites her to call the clinic for follow-up. And that's been the thing that's been really different to other pilots around the world. We've got 99% of test positive women in active follow-up. Um, How many women in Malaysia are currently getting screened? So we think about 25% of Malaysian women have ever had a pap smear in their program, which is about 50 years old. And with the self-collected samples, so how does that work? Presumably women take a sample from their own vagina and then that's tested and then they're provided the results through a text that's message. Right. Yeah. And did you find that you were able to process more women because the testing process is quicker by just going in and out themselves rather than having the consultation yeah. with a practitioner? Yeah. So the clinics we went into and there these clinics are all throughout Malaysia are incredibly overcrowded and there are usually several consultations going on in a room. So deciding to take a pap smear means uh, the nurse has to walk the patient to a dedicated room, which is at the back. In the clinics we visited, it was also where they did the laundry. It really was quite difficult. It's going to be at least 20 minutes for the nurse to do that and get over the cultural barriers. So we had reports saying we were lucky to do four or five PAPs in a day, but we're screening 50 women a day with the new approach. It's transformed their attitude to screening and their sense that they can achieve what they need to achieve. And how effective is it in contrast to a HPV test? In, Sorry, in yeah, contrast to a practitioner collected, collected sample. sample, yeah. So the really good news is that a meta-analysis come out recently by Mark Arben and colleagues, and what that shows is that for the detection of the precancerous abnormalities that we want to find, there is no difference in sensitivity. So this self-collected sample performs as well as a nurse or doctor collected sample. It is so exciting for the global picture because it is highly scalable in a way the practitioner collected samples aren't. And a lot of people, women might not be aware that this self-collection process is currently available in Australia. And as I understand, we were the first country to roll it out as part of a national screening program. Why was that decision made that this was an important aspect of getting women screened and of targeting women that are under screened or not screened at all? Sure, because we know this is a huge driver in preventing the cancers we're not already preventing. And we also know there's an equity issue in our cervical screening program. So women who come from lower socioeconomic settings, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women, women from some other culturally and linguistically diverse communities do not screen as often or as well as other Australian women and are more likely to get cancer. Associate Professor Marion Saville is Executive Director of the VCS Foundation. You're listening to The Health Report here on RN, ABC News and CBC Radio across Canada. I'm Olivia Willis, sitting in for Norman Swan.